Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of the Catholic View for Women here on EWTN, where we give you news and views from a truly Catholic perspective. I'm Teresa Tamio, and I also host a daily radio show on EWTN Radio, and that's called Catholic Connection. On behalf of our pastoral advisor, Father Frank Pavone, and our co-host, Elena Rodriguez, of course, from EWTN, and Janet Marana from EWTN Defending Life and the Silent No More Awareness Campaign and Priest for Life, we want to invite you to this very special edition of our program where we're going to take a look at your questions inquiring minds want to know and speaking of inquiring minds we have a number of them live in the studio with us That's today right. for our catholic view for women pilgrimage so fun close to 40 people from around the country joining us for another great trip here to ewtn yeah, and you know, this is something we want to encourage our, our viewers to, you know, when we announce the next pilgrimage, to come on, get on board, because they're having both a spiritual experience and a lot of fun. You know, they came in on Tuesday night. We went out to uh, Father Mitch's parish at St. Elias. We did some evening prayer in the beautiful church, and then we had a beautiful catered Lebanese dinner in the church hall, and we kind of got to know each other. Today, they're quite busy. They were at the televised mass here this morning in the chapel, and then they're taking behind the scenes a tour this afternoon of the network. Of course, now they're here with us while we're taping some more programs. They're going to go over to the Irondale Cafe for lunch. Where you know that's that uh, movie, the Fried, Fried Green, Green Tomatoes. tomatoes right. uh, mm -hmm. the, it was called the Whistle Stop Cafe. Well, this is what it was based on. And actually, the home Fanny Flag was the person that that whole story was about. And she actually, her home uh, is about two blocks from the, from the Irondale Cafe. I'm going to they're come back here for an in-depth tour of the network, which is really great. They'll see where the radio studio is yes, radio Elena's yeah. radio, uh, radio they actually radio, came radio. by this morning yeah. when I was doing my well, show doing unbeknownst show. to me they were looking at the back of my head but it was <laughs> a, but they were there I felt their presence yeah right yeah. and of course then they're going to go to the gift shop the beautiful gift shop right here at the network and we're going to do a book signing of our books and then tonight they're going to be in the audience for the live show with Father Mitch and then tomorrow I think is for me the very special day because we're going to go out with the bus to Hansville to the shrine of the most blessed sacrament we're going to have a day of retreat. Father Pavone will be our retreat master and some of the friars there. And it's really a time, like Mother Angelica always said, to come away and spend some time with Jesus. And they get to, speaking of Mother Angelica, they get to pray, pray by, the, her, by tomb. her tomb. Yeah. And, and of mm -hmm. course, you know, Mother always, I, I remember telling, asking Mother, why, Mother, did you pick a place so far away? And she goes, ha, ha, Janet, the cell phone signal out here is terrible. They'll have to pay attention to Jesus. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you know, and Mother laughed like she always yes, did. She like, just thought that was so ooh. funny. So when I get out there and my bars go down, four, three, two, one, I look up and say, mm-hmm, Mother, but I gotcha. But your spiritual bars Go, go up. up. My spiritual oh, bars go up. Bummed. Very good, Elena. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I really want to encourage people, whether you come here for the Catholic View for Women or any time during the year, coming here on pilgrimage mm -hmm. and check out uh, EW10.com, the pilgrimage department. They'd be more than happy to help your parish. Some whole parishes come down by bus, which That's I think rude. is great. Yeah, it's nice to come with the group, I think. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Don't you? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Like yeah. coming yeah. with a group? Yeah. <laughs> and EWTN has a pilgrimage department. Right, they do. So you yes. can mm -hmm. contact the EWTN pilgrimage department, and that's available on EWTN.com. Right. And then you can organize your pil pilgrimage because the folks here are very good at the pilgrimage department. They have all kinds of experience and can even provide suggestions. So mm -hmm. it's very easy to organize a pilgrimage. And of yeah. course, Brother Leo, there. I know, has been accompanying them. Brother Leo's been great, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's give a shout Brother out Leo. to Brother Leo. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you really feel at home when you come here, and that's... We are a family. We, we are really a family. Take that family. family. Well, really? that's what it says here, EWTN, look. We are family. We're family. We are family. Yep. We're family. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, speaking, speaking of family, we have our Catholic view for women family at home that watches our program faithfully. And like we said, go to our website, thecatholicviewforwomen.com. We, we mean this sincerely when you sign up to get our e-letter, tell us your questions and comments. So this show, we thought we would just dedicate to the, the questions that have come in most frequently, some of the things that are on the burning on the minds of our viewers of the Catholic View. So ladies, should I give you the first question? Yes. Okay, the first question comes from one of our viewers from Texas, and they write, do you have any resources for women who have contracepted and now past the age of conception, have no children, and feel guilty and very sad about it. I mean, other than confession. I was thinking about learning uh, to live childless because of a bad decision, and now watching most of my friends having grandchildren, it makes me very sad. Aww. What should I do? 
Well, I, I think, I, I'm looking at this thinking she's probably about my age or our age. Right. Uh, between, yeah. in, in, in the mid-50s and, right. and maybe 60s. But there's a lot of us who, who contracepted, including uh, my husband and, and myself before we came back to the church. And there was always going to be a certain amount of, of mourning for that. Uh, but you've been to confession, so that's amazing. But what you have to do is you have to realize that you have been forgiven. Okay. Right. And then you just need to continue to to seek God in your life. Uh, one of the suggestions I would have is to uh, get more involved in your parish. Maybe join a women's Bible study. Maybe find a spiritual director. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Burke, who works here at EW10 mm -hmm. and also at the National Catholic Register, has a wonderful website, which is spiritualdirection.com. Mm -hmm. And you can go to his website and get a lot of great ideas on how to get closer to the Lord. But you're forgiven, and it's, sometimes it's really hard to accept that, but you are. And it's, you know, it's hard to forgive yourself. It's hard to forgive yourself. Right. right. And I know, Teresa, I know this subject comes up a lot with right. you personally right. because people, when you travel in the country, you Why don't ask, I have any children? They, you right. get asked that question a right. lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I can imagine that makes you feel bad when people just ask that question. Well, right? it's, it's very invasive, yes. but also I think for us, and I have to say, because remember when we were first doing this show, you, wanted to, you said, well, maybe we should do a, uh, you know, a, um, a story about you and Dominic and, and no children. I said, well, you know what? I have to say that when I, I I've always love, I'm crazy about babies. I I'm turning into my mother starting to grab babies off the street and squeezing them. It gets very <laughs> embarrassing. It's the Sweet. Italian thing. But for whatever reason, I, I never felt called to be a physical mother. Right. I, I felt called from the time I was eight or nine years old to be in communications. It was that strong in my heart. It really was. And uh, uh, Dominic, we were always, you know, felt that if it happened, it happened. And we fell away from the faith and we were contracepting. But when we stopped, we went and talked to our parish priest and said, okay, we've healed our marriage. We've come back. We stopped contracepting. But people are saying, well, why don't you have children? Why don't you adopt? But at the same time, we were getting more and more, more involved in ministry. God was right. pulling me into ministry full time. Dominic was discerning the diaconate. And our pastor said, as long as you're not doing anything to prevent life, if you're open to life, if it happens, it happens fine. But what do you feel God is calling you to do? And I said, well, we feel called to ministry. And he said, well, as long as you're following the church teaching and you're still opening to life, you continue to pray about what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. And if it would have happened, and of course we came back to the church, um, you know, over 20 years ago, so there was a possibility that it could have happened because I was still young enough at that point. But it didn't. And then I read in the catechism. It was very beautiful and it meant a lot to me. It talked about, it, it encouraged us, right, if you can't have children to uh, seek adoption, possibly pray about adoption. But if you don't adopt, to live a husband and wife living sacrificially for the church. Right. And I thought, mm. wow. Mm. You know, that yeah. was what I felt that we were being called yeah. to do. And right. I had not seen that line in the catechism before. And I thought, you know, and, and I think one of the reasons that um, I talk to women so much about, you know, being open to whatever God wants is because I've been there. And I truly believe that God put this, what I'm doing now on my heart, broadcasting as a child because he knew what I would be doing. I had to go through all of that in the secular media. Mm -hmm. But you have to forgive your, yourself. That's you have to forgive us, yourself, yeah. and God forgives you. But give yourself time. Um, and there's a difference. St. Teresa of Avila talks about the difference between remorse and condemnation. Mm -hmm. Remorse is not a bad thing because remorse makes you, um, you know, so more, much more appreciative of the forgiveness right. factor. Mm -hmm. And you're always recognizing who God is and who you well, are. But it's not condemnation. There's yeah, a difference. Yeah, and that's like the women with the silent no more. They regret their abortion. Right. You know, uh, and they, they say that openly in their testimonies. Uh, and they all admit, too, when they go through healing, the hardest part is forgiving yourself. Accepting God's forgiveness mm -hmm. and mercy is the easy part. But then you've forgiving got to let go yourself. altogether and forgive yourself. And so I think for the, for this particular viewer and the others, who are, a lot of people have written in about this, Teresa and, and Elena. And I think what Teresa is saying is maybe get involved in ministry in the church. Maybe Exercise that's... Exercise that spiritual motherhood. Right. I was that's just going right. to say that. Yeah. Maybe she's, maybe she's an aunt. Take right. the role of a great yes. aunt or, <laughs> aunt, uh, you know, uh, maybe taking helping with, you know, other children that, you know, seriously, because that's very Find important, some nurturing. some other person in your life, a younger person, whom mm -hmm. you can sp be a spiritual mother to this person right. and be a good witness. Okay. And that's part of your healing. I get Mother's Day cards every year from my listeners. How See? sweet. That's yeah. sweet. That's yep. very sweet. Mother <laughs> Teresa. Call your mother. Call your mother. Call your mother. All right. Well, here's another question. This one comes from a viewer in Maryland, and they write, growing up in the Catholic faith versus converting to the Catholic faith, what are the differences and what are the similarities? Mm. Well, <laughs> where do we begin? Where do we begin? <laughs> because, you know, in, in both our cases, we grew up in the Catholic faith. I went to Catholic schools all the way straight through into college. And yet, that did not stop me from getting swept up into the secular world and going away from the church. You know, so what are the differences? I mean... I think it's it's about the same in, in that, well, 
I guess people who convert altogether, I find them even, they know the faith sometimes better than we do. Yeah, very powerful, I, that's what I find. Right. Very yeah. You know? yeah, because they study their way in. We're kind of, Dr. Scott Hahn always says we're kind of the, the, the cradle Catholics are like the spoiled kids on the block, you right. know, when we, we grow yeah. up with this, you know, and that we're sitting on Fort Knox and we don't even know it. But I, but I think the, the biggest difference is the, the whole uh, tradition that we grow up with, there's so much about our faith. It's a very physical faith as well as mm -hmm. spiritual. I mean, you know, right. when people talk about the smells and bells, I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, I Very love true. the statues I love and incense. I love the icons and, and the I love the incense, incense and the candles yeah. and the alt and all of that. And there is a, you know, this tradition that you grow up with as a Catholic, even right. if you fall away, you recognize these different things, you mm -hmm. know, the visuals, the sights, the sounds and the smells. Right. But that's a beautiful thing when you come into as a convert, many people have told me it means even more to them. Mm -hmm because they grew up, you know, with something maybe very dry. Very different. Very yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. I would yeah. say one of the differences is maybe in terms of appreciating your faith. In my case, I'm a cradle Catholic, and I came into the church through baptism. When I was exactly one month old, exactly, exactly to the date, my parents brought me to baptism, and uh, so did my brother. So my parents were, were reverts to the Catholic faith by the Crucio movement, and then as they started oh, to have us, yeah. They came into the Crucio movement and they raised us Catholic with a great example of evangelization, both mom and dad, and in, in, in the media, which was their profession and is still today. But the, there's, there's this appreciation of the faith that I've noticed in many of my colleagues here at EWTN who are converts as adults right. to the Catholic faith. They have this appreciation. They come out of Mass and they tell you, I can't tell you how much I appreciate to have yeah. had the, 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 be able to receive communion. Right. And then they have friends and relatives who are going to other Protestant faith churches. And they, they actually have a priest who is a convert who actually says, well, the, the Protestant brothers and sisters, while we have the real presence, they have the real absence. And, mm -hmm. and in, in a way that and he appreciates that so much because he has been on both sides. So I would say that appreciation of the faith will be different depending on your faith journey, but can still be a great experience. Right. I think also to really embrace the liturgical seasons in the church, That's which, right. is in, which, yeah. which yeah. I love, you know, uh, mm -hmm. when we have all, all the different seasons and, of course, ordinary time and, and and, and, and the High Holy Days, it's just, it's absolutely wonderful to look at the calendar, the Catholic calendar. Now being married to a deacon, it means even even more to me since I'm going to ordain. So yeah, and it's I think, you powerful. know, people who never drifted from the Catholic Church like we did that just so they have always been faithful there, maybe sometimes they take it for granted. I think it's people who convert and revert because I think as reverts, we're like, I can't get enough. I know. Yeah. I, I can't read enough. I, I couldn't, like when I first came back, I, oh, Father Pabon threw me in full force. He was my spiritual director. And the catalyst that brought me back, I mean, I, he was my spiritual director. I became a catechist, so I taught second grade uh, CCD at our parish. That's why I taught full-time public school. Uh, I became a Eucharistic minister. I, like, I just couldn't give enough back mm -hmm. for all those 20-some-odd years that, that I, missed, I ran away. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think reverts and converts are like the cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. And so maybe for people who, thanks be to God, you never went away from your faith. You've always been there. It's time to maybe yes. be a cheerleader too, you know, and get more appreciative, like mm -hmm. you're saying, of the real presence, and maybe go to adoration, yes, adoration, and, yeah, you know, things like that. Because I think too often we do take our Catholic faith for, for granted. I'm going to throw something out there and go out on a limb, and, and you may be too young to remember this, and, but you probably do. There's a wonderful movie. It's based on a true story. And when I first saw this film growing up, I thought it was cute. You know, I was I was I'd just gone through eight years of Catholic school, then I was in a public high school. I thought, oh, it was cute because I did have all nuns when we were in grade school. Though it's a cute movie. The Trouble with Angels. Oh, yeah. Starring Healy Mills. But I'll tell you what, when I came back to the church and I sat down and I watched that movie, it happened to be on um, on a Sunday afternoon, and Dom and I had just gotten back from Mass and he went off in the house to do something. And I started watching that movie with Rosalind Russell and Haley Mills. It's based on a true story. Two young girls who meet at boarding school and one does become a nun. And the one who becomes a nun is this crazy, wild kid who's always getting into trouble. But right. the mother superior, played by Rosalind Russell, recognizing that spirit, that feisty right. St. Teresa of Avila spirit in this young girl. And she is, you, through the movie, and I'm seeing this all right as a revert, and I'm sitting there watching The Trouble with Angels, bawling my eyes out. My husband says, I thought this was a comedy. I'm like, yeah, because I finally <laughs> got it. But what was in that film were a lot of the traditions of growing up Catholic. Right. And it's such a good movie. Read the book, watch the movie, The Trouble with Angels. I mm. give it out at, at, at Christmas time. That's right. And you would appreciate it growing up Catholic. But Taking you know, it right now. Yes, Trouble, with, Trouble Angels. with Angels, <laughs> Haley Mills. It's a classic with Rosalind Russell. That's right. So, and, and now I look at that and I realize, wow. And what I loved about that film is that Haley Mills is you know, always getting into trouble. And I was, I know it's a shock, 
live audience, but I was getting into trouble a lot in, in no. grade school, especially well, for talking I know your too mother, much. Rosie Posey there, and she always says, uh, Teresa! Yeah. But I, I kind of identified, didn't become a nun, obviously, but I identified with her the way she was watching the sisters yeah. and what they were doing, and she was like sneaking into the chapel and watching them pray, mm -hmm. and there was something about the faith. Mm -hmm. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? You could see the questioning in her eyes, right. and then she eventually stays back and becomes a nun. Mm -hmm. So Trouble with Angels, great film. Yeah, And yeah. I can remember, too, as a child growing up, we had a lot of sisters in our school, not like today. You know, Back then, we had only two lay teachers, and they were all the sisters, and they lived in the convent. I remember I even volunteered. I would go and dust and clean my mother. You'd say, oh, you don't want to dust around this house, but you go dust for the sisters. You know, But it's true. Mm -hmm. As young I would do girls, that just so I could sneak it to the convent and right. see what it was like. Yeah, that's it. We wanted to be by the sisters. I actually got caught sneaking into the convent one time and got in trouble and had to stay after class. Anyway. We have uh, we have some more questions, but I think we should take, have a, take break. a break. Take yeah. a break. Just uh, just one one closing line on this. I think if you ask about the difference between a convert and a, and a and a revert, you also want to ask what is what is it that they have in common? And I think what they all should have in common, we should all have in common, is uh, exercise of our faith, piety, study of our faith, and action from our faith should become action. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Well said. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will uh, rejoin your segment, actually, Inquiring Minds Want to Know, answering your questions. If you have any other questions that you'd like to ask us here at EWTN's The Catholic View for Women, the website, again, thecatholicviewforwomen.com. We also have an amazing pastoral advisor, Father Frank Bavone, who also helps us answer those questions. So he'll be there, too, online, catholicviewforwomen.com. More of your questions when we come back. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us in this very special edition of the Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio, along with my wonderful co-host, Elena Rodriguez and Janet Morana. And this is a program all about you, because we're doing Inquiring Minds Want to Know. We're basing this program on your questions that come in over the months when we monitor our website. Janet looks at all the questions that come in, and then we kind of take them not only to address on one of our programs each season, but also to actually develop program ideas. Right, exactly. Yeah. All right, well, let's go to another question from our viewers. This one comes from New Jersey, where I currently okay, live. That's where I was born. <laughs> okay, and uh, here's the question. It says, I have a 28-year-old daughter raised Catholic who has suddenly decided that she is gay. What do I say, and how can I help mm. her? And that, you know, we did a lot of programs when CSAC, several, because Teresa and I uh, went to a Courage conference out in the Archdiocese right. of Detroit. And, of course, Courage is the ministry, and it has the parent component called Encourage, Encourage right. uh, where they help gay people to live chase life, chase life celibate mm -hmm. life uh, with that tendency and, and help them to live according to their Catholic faith. So I think my first piece of advice for her would be to go to the Courage website. Right. And, and CourageRC.net. Uh, dot 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 CourageRC.net. So, yeah. and CourageRC.net. Within yeah. Courage is, is the website right. for, for the parents. Yeah. But I, I remember some of the people we interviewed at the conference and, and they said, well, you know, um, the, the best thing to do is, first of all, you have to love them. Right. And, and support, you know, not that you're supporting them, but you have to still, they're still your, your daughter, your son, you have to love them. And g give them that you're not shunning them, you're not throwing them out of the house, you're not, you know, because that's not going to help. They're in a state of confusion, and they just want to know that you're, you will still love them. And I remember uh, Dan in particular yeah. uh, had said that, you know, it's the acceptance from your parents that they're not going to you know, get. The, they're not going to turn their backs on you. So mm -hmm. don't turn your backs, mm -hmm. and uh, encourage the, the parent component. Uh, there was a, a couple that gave their testimony at the conference, and it, it, they talked about their struggles. Uh, that for a while there, because their son was involved with one partner after another, he he shunned the parents, even though they were still loving. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes like a support group, a lot of the parents uh, with each other. I, I think there has to be a clarification, though, between, as you said, and you mentioned it earlier, but I think we should build in it a little bit. You love them. You say, right. you'll always be my son or daughter. Right. Uh, my door is open to discuss this, and, and I, I will never abandon you, but that you know your, what your faith teaches you and what you believe, mm -hmm. this is not a good lifestyle. This is not a good thing. Not healthy. When, when you get the opportunity to sit down and talk to them about it, and that's each individual has to figure that out in terms right. of when, when they're the approachable. Mm -hmm. But again, um, a lot of parents, and, and I do a lot of interviews on this on my radio show, a lot of parents automatically say, well, I want my son or daughter to be happy, so therefore I have to completely accept and endorse right. that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. 
And, yeah, and we have a lot that's of not correct. callers to EWTN radio shows precisely with the same right. dilemma. And what our experts recommend is, first of all, sit down and talk in a friendly way. Don't do it when there's other people around because then everybody starts throwing in throwing their opinions in their opinion. or, right. or their misinterpretations of what the church teaches. Right. And be very loving in the way that you explain what the church teaches. And the church teaches love the sinner hate the, the sin. sin. Aren't right. we all sinners? Right, that's right. In one department or in another. Mm -hmm. So we are all looking for that mercy. So e explain that. This is a, a young lady, uh, an, an adult, young adult. So I would also recommend sit down and have a frank talk about why do you feel you have exactly. this inclination? Exactly. What is it? Tell right. me about it. I'm mm -hmm. interested in knowing what you think mm -hmm. and why you have reached this conclusion. And let them open themselves. Just listen and listen and, and listen. And then another example, I remember Dan in his interview with us, because he talked about, well, uh, parents saying, well, what do I do if my daughter comes home or my son that's gay and they want to bring their partner with them and they want to you know, sleep upstairs? You know? And so Dan said, well, what would you do if you're... Uh, you know, heterosexual daughter or son did that. Would You'd you say let no? Them, mm -hmm. Would you the let them go thing. sleep? Mm -hmm. No. Right. So he said, treat it the same way. Right. D whether you're, you know, heterosexual or homosexual, no, I will not have you sleeping with someone in my home. And he said, just treat it the same way. You know. And, it is uh, very important to also encourage encourage <laughs> parents to know that their household is sacred right, that's and right. that they have to make their household respected. They wouldn't let a thief come in and cause harm and damage to the household. Likewise, they can't let somebody from the family or outside the family come in and cause harm to the blessings that that household has. Your household is your, the place where you live, the place where the fa family gathers to break bed, bread together, but also it's the place where the family gathers to pray. And it's a, it's a small church. It's a domestic church. You have to protect that as well, I lovingly. Think but your, your point it. about sitting down um, and really having a conversation is really important, important because in the culture that we're living in today, many young people feel that it's something that they almost have to do mm -hmm. to experiment, whether it be the, you know, the whole gender ideology issue that our Holy Father has brought up in, in Amoris Laetitia and, and other documents. There's this push out there to actually experiment with this. So mm -hmm. you don't even know really how, what, what has happened. So that's why sitting down and talking yes. with them is so important. And then both encourage, encourage, as Janet mentioned, encourage for those who are dealing with same-sex attraction, encourage for the parents, but also really look at church teaching on this. And, and this right. is what Encourage is so beautiful on because they have the documents there. And, and, and the, the great thing about the church is that the church is not asking anything differently. No. We're all called to be chaste, even married people. Chastity mm -hmm. is, and you have to understand what chastity means, but we're all called to the same thing, to be chaste. And if they want to look at these previous episodes, they can go to our website, and on the right-hand side, they'll see the different seasons. Just click on them, and there's titles scroll down to the different uh, programs. Right, and you mentioned Dan, Dan Matson, uh, who's right. very involved in the promoting of the beautiful film that's been here on EW10, Desire of the Everlasting mm -hmm. Hills. Mm -hmm. That's right. Which talks about uh, three Catholics who have same-sex attraction but are living in the faith and are very, very happy. They've actually testified uh, before different Vatican conferences on this issue, upholding the church teaching. That's right. So desire the everlasting hills and, of course, encourage, encourage ministries. That's and right. Believe it or not, we're almost out of time already, so well, we'll have to do another show on, on your questions. questions. We'll yes. hold the rest of the questions for the, yes. another future episode, yes. which means keep sending. And I want people to understand that we don't wait till we air your question to answer you. Throughout the year, we have Father Pavone as our pastoral director, and we do answer these, these questions as right. they go. But I guess it's time for homework oh, once again. It is. It is. That's once a time. Homework. Okay, so number one, start a spiritual jour jour uh, journal so you can track uh, your spiritual, spiritual progress over time, hopefully with the help of a spiritual director. And like Teresa you gave, the Dan Burke is a great resource for that. Number two, visit the EWTN Religious Catalog. We can purchase the DVD collection of our previous seasons. Go to, of course, EWTNRC.com. All those, and then when you purchase a season, you're getting 13 shows, and it, it's great. So, uh, and I'm sure that I can help you with the titles, and you'll know which seasons you'd like to purchase. Mm -hmm. And of course, number three, of course, like we've been saying, visit our website to sign up for our monthly e letter, and also give us those suggestions and questions for future shows. And of course, we're on Facebook, so like us on Facebook. Yeah, I also think what we can do too, we've mentioned a couple of different resources during this program. We will have we, them we'll, on the we'll website. We'll put those on the website because. I know you're watching and you may mm -hmm. not have a pen handy or a pad. And, and don't then forget finally, our quickly, our patroness, the Kitchen Madonna, also available, the Religious Catalog and the Beautiful Symbolism, the Kettle to Nourish Us in Body and Soul. 
the broom to keep our mind clean, of our thoughts clean, but also our home clean and the keys. Mary will help uh, bring us to the keys to open the kingdom and also the keys to keep our home safe. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful, and I know we have them in all our homes, so she's great. The and and we thank you so much for your wonderful questions. And again, you can go to the Catholic View for Women com. And a special thanks to our amazing studio audience for visiting us here yeah. for the pilgrimage. On behalf of our pastoral advisor, Father Frank Pavone from Priests for Life, Elena Rodriguez and Janet Morena, I'm Teresa Tamio. Thanks for watching. Thanks for writing us. And we'll see you next time on The Catholic View for Women. Have a blessed evening or a blessed day. Whatever time it is in your time zone, we love you. Come on back.